Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Lucy from Woodpecker. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. Today, uh, we're honored to have uh, Dr. Mustafa from Turkey to give us a course. So now we'll, we'll Hello, have a brief everyone. introduction. Uh, this is Lucy from Woodpecker. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. Today, uh, we're honored to have uh, Dr. Mustafa from Turkey to give us a course. Oh. Uh, sorry, let's continue. Uh, so now we'll have a brief introduction uh, to uh, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, Dr. Mustafa has got his DDS and PhD degrees. He's an associate professor of Medical University, Istanbul, Turkey. He's also an active member of Turkish Dental Association, Turkish Endodontic Society, American Association of Endodontists, European Society of Endodontology, Italian Society of Endodontics. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Mustafa is also a renowned speaker and frequently invited to major national and international conferences in Turkey. He has published more than 50 original research articles in national and international peer-reviewed and index journals. He also works as a reviewer for many index inter uh, international journals. He also uh, has attended many national and international congresses symposia courses and conferences. Okay, that's all about the brief introduction to our lecture. So now it's a short time of our Dr. Mustafa. Dr. Mustafa, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, for Woodpecker uh, for again uh, providing me to meet with you. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the activation systems in root canal irrigation, and uh, I will uh, talk about how to do it in an uh, effective way. Uh, before uh, starting my lecture, I want to show you uh, some spectacular pictures of my lovely country, Turkey. Uh, you are seeing uh, a very spectacular picture from Istanbul. Uh, this is Antalya, Efes, Hagi Sofia from Istanbul, and Nemrut Mountain, a very famous uh, historical mountain. Uh, Pamukkale is very famous for its white rocks and hot water. Also, Antalya is a very touristic place. And the Cappadocia is a very uh, spectacular view uh, from the balloons uh, that you can see everything from the upstairs. Uh, if you have a chance to visit Turkey, don't hesitate to contact with me. And uh, I can give my advices where to go and what to do in Turkey. And uh, this is the hospital I have been working since uh, 2012. Uh, it will be my 10th uh, year in this hospital. This means just a decade. Uh, and uh, I am uh, I am uh, working on this hospital uh, just on endodontics. Uh, before starting my lecture, I want to mention uh, Einstein's famous equation, E is equal to MC squared. And uh, when we get it into endodontics, uh, we are going to see that endodontics is equal to make canal clean. And this is really, really uh, very important for an endodontist to make the canal uh, literally clean. But uh, when I first uh, read uh, this article, White Lines or White Lines, uh, I was uh, really re amazed with this article because uh, this article uh, literally reflects all my ideas and opinion about endodontics. Because today on Instagram or in Facebook, uh, every dentist is sharing his or her own case, uh, like my cases, like curve canals, like poops. But how much do we know about these root canal therapies, uh, root canal treatments? Because according to the uh, International Association of, of uh, endodontics and the European Society of Endodontics uh, for a successful root canal treatment uh, the root canal treated teeth uh, must be in the mouth uh, both functionally and the radio roughly healed at the end of four years. So uh, we have to get rid of uh, checking these root canal therapies by just looking at your radiographs 
because uh, the day when we stop looking for radiographic aesthetics and start asking how well we disinfected the root canal, uh, the success rate will probably start improving significantly. And also, I want to share this very nice article by Rikichi et al. Um, and this will show us uh, not to say a root canal uh, treatment so successful when we just check the radiograph. Because as Rikichi et al. performed a very root, uh, root canal treatment, as you see in the radiograph, uh, at the end of uh, three months, the patient came to office with a swelling and a very heart pain. And, in that, and there was no other choice for Rikichi et al. Uh, to uh, reject the root canal in the optical third, and they got the tooth of uh, this optical third in a histological section and also in deionization, and they found a very, very, very unclean lateral canal, as you see in histological sections. Please let me know how can you disinfect this lateral canal without uh, using the power of irrigation. Uh, because nowadays uh, we are using the late rotary or reciprocating uh, nitrile files in uh, dental in industry. And there is no file that can clean these areas like lateral canals, uh, ramifications, uh, isthmuses, uh, and the other uh, parts of uh, root canals. So we have to use the power of irrigation. And for using this power of irrigation, we have to activate our irrigant solution. Because the root canal anatomy is much more complex than we suppose and we think, as you see in these deionization studies. Because at the end of uh, these areas, uh, the bacteria are still living and we are not just uh, struggling to get rid of these bacteria. We are also trying to remove a very difficult area called as biofilm area. The main objective of root canal irrigation is to destroy this biofilm area. And just using only needle shrinkage and sodium hypochlorite by this way, it's impossible to debris this biofilm area. What about the feature of irrigation? As you know, the change is the only constant as Heraclitus uh, told us in the ancient times. Yes, the change is the only constant because the endodontics, uh, in my opinion, is one of the a most important area of endodontics that goes on with the development of uh, technology. When we see the endodontics, especially in the United States, we are going to see a new term, endodontics reimagined. Look, now uh, in the slide, we are seeing the two different root canal treatments done by the same endodontist. These, what is the difference between these two root canal treatments? As you see, the one uh, that you see in the left uh, or on the right of your side is a normal root canal treatment that uh, you don't see any isthmus areas or in any lateral canals uh, that are cleaned very well. But on the right one, this is the real root canal treatment that we want to see radiographically in nowadays. We want to clean and obturate the areas like isthmuses, like lateral canals, and all the apical foramina. This is why we use the term of endodontics reimagined. And uh, in United States, there is a new technology called gentle wave. In fact, it has been using for uh, four or five years, but nowadays, by the help of uh, social ma media, uh, we are uh, seeing really, really interesting case uh, done by the gentle wave, uh, especially uh, if you check the in Instagram page of Advanced Endo and my dear friend, uh, Michael Pre Pereira, uh, he was my guest, uh, one of my Instagram show, name of Endo Talks, and he told us the main objective of gentle wave. 
because gentle wave aims to clean the root canals without uh, mechanical instrumentation. Uh, or we can say that not without mechanical instrumentation, just by using a few nighttime instruments. And by the help of this gentle wave technology, it is really possible to clean all the parts of root canal areas like isthmus or lateral canals. And this provides us a really very clean root canal surface, denting canal walls, and at the end, you are preserving the uh, root canal denting as much as you can. Because as you know, preserving the peripheral denting is one of our main goals while we are performing uh, minimal invasive endodontics because we don't want to leave any more vertical root fractures by preserving this uh, presarical dentin area. And now in these slides, you are seeing how gentle wave works, how it cleans all the parts of root canals and how you can operate your root canals by using bioceramic root canal sealers. This is literally the area of new endodontics and we call this uh, the new term of endodontics reimagine. And I also name this uh, technology in my country like the new generation endodontics. And also they published a very good article at the Journal of Endodontics and they found uh, approximately 100 person healing in the teeth with apical lesions uh, just using a 20 file, uh, 20 file, just look, a 20 file file by using gentle wave technology. So, in this article, I will show you the way how to do root canals without using gentle wave technology. Because as you know, this technology is only uh, used in United States and in Canada, not in Europe, not in uh, other countries, not in Middle East, even in China and other parts of the Asia. You can't use it, but you can perform very good root canal treatments and uh, you can clean your root canal very, very well by using your actuation methods. So in these articles, I will mention how to do a very new generation, a new area of uh, endodontics by uh, mentioning the uh, advantages of actuating your root canal irrigant. So during the uh, presentation, uh, I will talk about a little bit root canal irrigants. How can you improve your irrigation protocol, actuation methods, uh, innovations in root canal irrigation and sodium hypochlorite extents. And I'm going to discuss uh, you uh, some of my cases. So uh, sodium hypochlorite, uh, I want to talk about a little bit uh, you about sodium hypochlorite. Uh, I don't want to tell you all the properties of sodium hypochlorite, but as you know, sodium hypochlorite is only the one root canal irrigant that has the ability to dissolve necro necrotic tissue, vital pulp tissue, and the organic components of dentin and the biofilms. This is uh, the only one uh, that uh, we can use as a gold standard in endodontics, and we have been using sodium hypochlorite for a hundred years. But nowadays, uh, there are uh, many new research about sodium hypochlorite. For example, the concentration of sodium hypochlorite is not any more important for the healing of periapical lesions. Uh, whether you use low concentration or high concentration of sodium hypochlorite, the effect of this uh, sodium hypochlorite concentration on the healing of uh, apical lesions is the same. So you don't have to use a high concentration of sodium hypochlorite to uh, see the healing of your apical lesions. It is important for you to use uh, the sodium hypochlorite in an efficient time and in an efficient uh, volume. But uh, you, can use, uh, you can use some methods to increase the effect of sodium hypochlorite, especially when you are using it in uh, low concentrations. You can increase the effect of sodium hypochlorite by heating, by using higher volume and more frequent intervals, and by using it in high concentration. But as I mentioned to you in the previous slides, it's not necessary for you to use sodium hypochlorite in high concentrations. The most efficient way to increase the effect of sodium hypochlorite is to heat, to increase the 
temperature of sodium hypochlorite because as Makeda et al. showed in their articles at the Journal of Endodontics, if you heat or increase the temperature of uh, 0.5% sodium hypochlorite until 4 to 5 uh, Celsius, you are going to obtain the effect of 5.25% of sodium hypochlorite. This is a very important uh, feature because by the way, you don't uh, you don't have the anxiety of uh, getting your sodium hypochlorite beyond the apex, and uh, your instance of uh, coming face to face and uh, sodium hypochlorite accidents will be so low. So you are going to use the effect of heating by using low concentration sodium hypochlorite. There are two ways for you to increase the uh, heat of uh, temperature of sodium hypochlorite. Before the research, we were using some special tanks for increasing the temperature of sodium hypochlorite, and we named this the uh, outside heating. But as you know, the temperature inside the root canal is close to body temperature. So that's why you have to increase the heat of your sodium hypochlorite inside the root canal by using two methods. You can use your warm operation techniques and pluggers or by using ultrasonic actuation technique. In here, you are seeing the bubble or champagne effect of sodium hypochlorite. If you are working sodium hypochlorite inside the root canals, you have to see this bubble effect. If you don't see this bubble effect, this means that your sodium hypochlorite doesn't work efficiently in your root canal area. So you have to see these bubbles when you are heating your sodium hypochlorite or when you are using ultrasonic actuation. This means that your sodium hypochlorite is working clearly in the root canal and it solves both vital and the devital tissues in the root canal area. What about the important notes about sodium hypochlorite? In each root canal, you should use at least two or three millimeters sodium hypochlorite between two files. In every root canal, you should use at least a 15 or 20 millimeters sodium hypochlorite. In intensive infected root canals, you should use sodium hypochlorite at least 20 or 30 minutes. Look, this is a very important feature because on social media or on uh, on social media, on at Instagram or Facebook, some dentists are sharing their cases and they uh, write for the definition area like that. Look, guys, I finished this root canal treatment at 20 minutes by using only one file. 20 minutes? Are you kidding me? You just have to use sodium hypochlorite at least 20 or 30 minutes to get rid of these intensive infected root canals. So, uh, shaping your root canals with nitai rotary systems is not so important if you don't do your irrigation clearly. Okay. And intracanal heating is really much, much, much more effective than outside heating. And also you can use your uh, sodium hypochlorite to disinfect, to, to disinfect gutta percha points because even you use a sterilized uh, gutta percha when you open its box and when uh, this comes to uh, your room or your surface, it also loses its sterilization. So you have to uh, keep your uh, gutta percha points uh, in a sodium hypochlorite uh, solution at the percentage of 5.25 percentage for one minute. What about a smear layer? Of course, a smear layer is uh, composed of remnants of pulp, bacteria, and dentin particles. Uh, according to the many literature, we have to get rid of the smear layer in endodontics, and we have to use EDTA uh, 17 percentage for two millimeters each canal at one minute one minute application. Uh, if you want, you can also activate the EDTA in the root canals, but not much more than one minute because it has a decalcifying effect on the root canal uh, dentin surface. You should be very careful and you should also be very careful uh, while you are using sodium hypochlorite with EDTA because sodium hypochlorite loses its tissue dissolving capacity when it contacts with EDTA. EDTA continues to go on its work, but it... Uh, 
it makes the sodium hypochlorite to lose its effect. So and nowadays you can use ititronic acid instead of EDTA because ititronic acid uh, does not interact uh, with the sodium hypochlorite and both of them can work in combination very uh, clearly. What about chlorhexidine? Uh, chlorhexidine uh, is also used uh, for the disinfection of root canals. Uh, two uh, per 2 sodium hypochlorite uh, is enough for root canal irrigation, but I recommend to use chlorhexidine for your necrotic cases, and uh, you don't need to activate your chlorhexidine, and you can use as a last irrigation uh, solution before operating your root canals, but uh, for not losing the bonding effect of uh, your root canal sealers between the gutta percha and the dentinal walls, you always have to neutralize your root canals after sodium hypochlorite and the chlorhexidine with st uh, distilled water in your last irrigation regimen. And also, uh, if uh, chlorhexidine and the sodium hypochlorite comes into contact, uh, they participate a very uh, bad uh, substance called paracoronin. Uh, it blocks your root canal and it also uh, affects the color of your tooth. So in every section, when you change your uh, irrigant solution like sodium hypochlorite EDTA or sodium hypochlorite to chlorhexidine or EDTA to chlorhexidine, you, uh, you always have to neutralize the root canals by using distilled water, not only a shrinkage of two millimeters uh, distilled water, you have to use at least eight millimeters or 10 millimeters of uh, distilled water for uh, neutralizing your root canal areas. Now let's uh, see the interaction between sodium hypochlorite and chlorhexidin. It is one of the most fasting and accelerated uh, chemical reaction in chemistry. So you should be very careful while using uh, these two irrigants together uh, not to block your root canals or uh, not to uh, uh, change the color of your tooth because it is really very difficult to whiten uh, this tooth when uh, sodium hypochlorite and the chlorhexidin uh, comes into contact and uh, form like a uh, paracrylon participation like that. You also have to be very careful while using EDTA and chlorhexidin in combination. Uh, this is totally wrong written. It should be EDTA. And look, when I drop a little bit chlorhexidine, you are going to see a substance like a foggy substance like this and this is called a salt solution so you always have to use your distilled water very clearly what about the most uh, used irrigants around the world uh, when we look at a, a survey studying done by uh, the american association of endodontists uh, you are going to see that the most used irrigation solution in the first one is sodium hypochlorite. The second is EDTA. And the last one is chlorhexidine. I advise uh, you to use sodium hypochlorite and EDTA for your vital cases. And for your necrotic cases, as a last irrigation solution, uh, you can finish your uh, root canal treatment with chlorhexidine. And also, please don't forget to use uh, distilled water before operating your root canals for both using uh, resin-based root canal sealers and uh, bioceramic root canal sealers. What about the factors determining the irrigation effectiveness? We can classify it into three segments, mechanical, chemical, and debris and bacterial removal. Of course, the effectiveness of debris and the bacterial removal is very important for us. Uh, we should be careful for the penetration depth of the needle, diameter of the root canal, inside and the outside diameter of the needle, irrigant prision, uh, pressure, the speed of irrigant at the type of uh, needle, the type of irrigant used, the type of needle, and the level of tip opening. Uh, there are many types of uh, irrigation needles in the dental industry, but I always recommend you side uh, to use side vented irrigation needle because uh, by using side vented irrigation needle, it's uh, really very important for you to get rid of the risk of 
uh, extrusing uh, sodium hypochlorite beyond the apex. Uh, for example, uh, this is a very good article done by the both scientists at all at Journal of Endodontics. They used bo both open-ended and the side-vented uh, sodium hypochlorite and they examined it in a, a CFT uh, dynamics. And as you see here, uh, they sent the organ solution to the apex of the root both at same speed and same pressure. And you see that the sodium hypochlorite goes to the apex so clearly, but if you use side-wanded irrigation needle, it is impossible, not impossible, but it's very rare for you to extrude the sodium hypochlorite behind the apex. So please always use side-wanded irrigation needles. Uh, five years ago, I was using such a two-side-wanted irrigation needle for irrigating my root canals. But uh, what about the distance of the needle to the apical tour? For an effective needle irrigation, you have to put your needle one millimeter before the working leg. Think about for the curl canals. It is really very difficult for you to close the apical third area by using such metal needles. But don't forget, it is really very important for you to clean the apical third rather than the coronal or middle third because everybody is successful for disinfecting the middle and the coronal areas of the root canal. The most important thing for endodontics is to clean clearly the apical third area. What about the wall shear stress to the dentinal walls? If you increase the size of the canal, your wall shear stress will really be diminished by enlarging your root canal size after 35. Also, the taper of the root canal is not very important while you are using needle irrigation. 0 0.4 or 0 0.6 will not affect your root canal irrigation when you are using activation systems. So, for an effective root canal irrigation with your needles, you have to use 28, 30, or 31 gauge needles to be close to the apical third area. And at least you have to make your root canal 35, 0.4 for an effective root canal irrigation. And also to diminish the vapor locked effect, you know, there's a vapor locked effect because of sodium hypochlorate's bubble effect, and it can uh, diminish the effect of uh, your root canal irrigants to penetrate into the uh, root canal uh, dentin tubules. So you have to uh, decrease this vapor locked effect and you always have to uh, move your uh, needle uh, in a corona apical direction to get rid of this vapor locked effect. But I always recommend you to use such uh, plastic needles to close to the apical area because by using these plastic nickels it is flexible and soft body to curve and flex not like other so it is very easy for you to uh, irrigate your root canals in working land and also it is very important for you uh, to clean the apical third area by using these plastic nickels because they work very close to the apical third area. They also have two side vented and not an open-ended surface. It's also uh, dual locked and uh, you can use it very clearly. Let's get a close look at how to activate our irrigation solutions. Or do we have to activate our irrigation solutions? Because of the complex anatomy of the root canals and because uh, we cannot clearly rebreed or uh, disinfect or uh, shape the uh, ramification areas, lateral canals and isthmuses. We have to use the power of activation while we are performing root canal irrigation. Look at the study by Lacard et al. They used the manual methods by needle irrigation and just using late advancements in a uh, root canal shaping area and without irrigation and uh, without activation of root canal irrigants there are always untouched areas if you only use your mechanical instrumentation technique 
your sodium hypochloride should penetrate into these untouched areas. You cannot achieve this by only using needle irrigation. You can only achieve this by activating your sodium hypochloride and your most important weapon to fight against these areas, to destroy these untouched areas, to get rid of this bioflame, it's the ultrasonic irrigation. It's first used by Richmond for the first time in 1957 in endodontics. As you know, uh, the ultrasonic irrigation is divided into two parts, active and passive ultrasonic irrigation. Because of it is high frequency feature, we are using passive ultrasonic irrigation, which means that we are using this uh, passive ultrasonic irrigation after we finish the shaping of our a root canal at least 35 at least 25 30 and 35 because we don't want the uh, files of these passive ultrasonic irrigation devices to touch the root canal walls because there is, we don't want an uncontrolled dental uh, removal at the end of uh, ultrasonic uh, passive ultrasonic activation you are a uh, producing an acoustic streaming and also a bubble effect called cavitation. And by this way, the ultrasonic uh, activation is doing its job in root canals. For example, if you use a sonic activation system, you cannot produce an acoustic streaming and the cavitation in the root canals. Or, okay, by using end activator or edit technology, you can produce a, a 3D irrigation in your root canals, but that will not produce you the same effect produced by ultrasonic irrigation like acoustic streaming and cavitation. So ultrasonic irrigation, named passive ultrasonic irrigation, is our gold standard for activating root canal irrigants. And you can use both six S six LED device and D six hundred LD uh, devices uh, produced by Woodpecker so clearly in your root canals. I am using both of these machines and I am really very satisfied with these two machines because I am not just performing to activate the root canal irrigants by using these devices. I am also using these devices for uh, my retreatment cases, uh, for uh, refining my excess cavity and for retrieving the broken instruments in the root canals. And also you can use these devices for your periodontology cases. I'm using ED60 and ED62 tips for uh, this uh, passive ultrasonic irrigation. And always you should be very careful by the oscillation direction of your ultrasonic file because your direction always will be in a corona apical direction. But for an efficient way of oscillation, you should use in a mesodistal way. Is it possible when you are using in a mouth? It's impossible for you to use your possible sonic irrigation system in a mesodistal way. You can you only use it in a mesodistal way in your in vitro uh, studies uh, on extracted tooth or on uh, 3D printed tooth. So you should be very careful when you are working on patient's mouth. For example, your ultrasonic tip should be placed minus two millimeters from the working line. It is very important. But don't forget, while you are using your passive ultrasonic irrigation, you have always the risk of unco uncontrolled removal of dentin. So you should be very careful while you are using passive ultrasonic irrigation technique. So how to, uh, what to do for an effective use of ultrasonics in your root canals? Or how can you reduce the uncontrolled removal of dentin? First of all, you should be very careful while you are using your passive ultrasonic irrigation technique. You should use in an intermittent activation way. You should use it no more than 20 seconds in your root canals. Total one minute will be enough for you. And you should always refresh your irrigant solution in the root canal. And you should be always very careful. And you should not forget the uncontrolled old removal of dentin. Please, let's check my case here. I'm working with passive ultrasonic irrigation technique to activate my irrigation solution. And as you see here, I am working in an intermittent way. I am not uh, using passive ultrasonic irrigation constantly. After 15 or 20 seconds, I am stopping. I'm refreshing always uh, my sodium hypochlorite in the root canals. 
And you are seeing the bubble effect by using this DTAL 600 LED ultrasonic device. And uh, you can also increase the temperature of sodium hypochlorite by using this technique. What about uh, sonic activation? Uh, I also recommend you uh, sonic activation because by using sonic activation, uh, you will not have the incidence of removal of the dentin. It can be also uh, helpful for you to use. Uh, I recommend you to use uh, eddy technology for the activation of root canals. The eddy is also used like that. Of course, it has not the power of ultrasonic irrigation, but uh, if you are afraid of uh, controlling using your activation devices, uh, you can choose sonic activation instead of uh, sonic activation techniques. Uh, one of in my lectures, uh, they asked me a very important question. One of the dentists asked me a question that you are using uh, like uh, sonic activation techniques or possible to sonic activation techniques. They wonder if the patient uh, experienced any post-operative pain after using these uh, irrigation activation techniques. Uh, last year, uh, I published an article at Odontology and we investigate the effect of these techniques on postoperative pain after using uh, different irrigation techniques. And believe me that uh, the patients uh, didn't experience any postoperative pain after using these techniques. Of course, uh, you should be very careful while using these techniques because open apex uh, truth um, will be an... Uh, uh, extend will cause extended procedures uh, if you don't uh, read your or if you don't examine your radiography carefully so you should be very careful while using this what about uh, the clinic the lateral areas isthmus areas what should you do uh, using your passive ultrasonic irrigation in an intermittent way is really very important to clean these lateral canal areas so please don't use your passive ultrasonic irrigation device more than one minute. Uh, after every 15 or 20 seconds, please stop, refresh your sodium hypochlorite and go on passive ultrasonic irrigation. Let's see one of my cases here. I'm always asking uh, my attendants on my lectures, do we have to activate root canal irrigation solution? Look, if I didn't activate my uh, sodium hypochlorite in this case, it was impossible for me to clean this lateral canal. And if I don't use my this passive ultrasonic device, and if I uh, didn't uh, activate my irrigation solution, I will only operate the only main canal. So I am coming to the first slide of my lecture, white lines or white lines. So if you don't use an activation, activation machine, you don't do a root canal treatment. It is really, really very important for you to activate your root canals. Please don't forget untouched areas after the shaping your root canal. Because using night tie instrumentation techniques will not provide a very uh, clean root canal surface for you. For the deployment of lateral canals, isthmuses, and all ramification areas, you should activate your irrigant very, very well. And they are also asking me manual activated irrigation. Uh, please, I want you to let that. Uh, we are living in a very, we are living in the time of uh, 20 and 22. We have many missions, very, uh, technology powered machines in our hands. So you don't need to activate your irrigation solution manually, okay? And at the end of manual dynamic activation, you can have flare ups or post-operative pain for your patients and it will be uh, very bad for your reputation. So I don't advise uh, to use manual dynamic, manual dynamic activated irrigation anymore. And uh, don't forget the post-operative pain at the end of uh, manual dynamic activation. What about uh, the complications when you are uh, performing uh, root canal irrigation? Uh, 
Uh, there's a very good article published on Journal of Endodontics, uh, Root Canal Irrigants and the Medicaments in Endodontic Malpractice Case in a Nationwide Lung Condition Observation. And in here, you are uh, seeing the picture of an uh, sodium hypochlorite extant for an upper kinine tooth with high uh, concentration of sodium hypochlorite. If you are not careful, you can have such cases. Uh, look at this poor guy. Uh, he needs a root canal treatment. He comes to the dental office, but then uh, he is going to find himself for a plastic surgery department and he will need maybe two or more uh, operations because there is a necrotic tissue on uh, his left cheek because of sodium hypochlorite accident. Uh, what about the symptoms of sodium hypochlorite accidents? Uh, there's a swear pain, there's a edema of neighboring soft tissues, there's a profuse bleeding from the root canal, there's a subcutaneous ecchymosis and the chlorine intestine and irrit irritation of throat after injection into maxillary sinus, and there is a common irreversible anesthesia or paresthesia. So what to do? Please control the pain with local anesthesia and analgesics. And always uh, remember to applicate the extraoral concupresses after the sodium hypochlorite accident is happened immediately. After one day, I advise you to use warm compresses and the freaking warm mouthpiece because it accelerates the local circulation and this will uh, reduce the ecchymosis on the patient's surface. The use of antibiotics is not obligatory obligatory if you don't have the risk of a secondary infection. The use of antihistamine is not obligatory if you don't have the risk of allergic on your patient. The use of corticosteroids is always controversial in endodontics because uh, you know using corticosteroids is very useful for relieving the pain of the patient, but it uh, affects uh, adversely the healing of the apical lesions. So uh, we have much more studies to see the effect of using corticosteroids in endodontics. The further endodontic therapy with sterosaline or clarexidin, if possible, in one single visit. If the patient is allergic to sodium hypochlorate, please don't use clarexidin because there are uh, chlor ions both in sodium hypochlorite and the clarexidin. And the reason for the aller allergic reactions is this because of this chlorine. And then these are uh, some swear cases after uh, sodium hypochlorite accidents. You see an accident like this. Uh, this is also one of a very fresh sodium hypochloric accidents uh, done one of my fellows at uh, departments of endodontics in my university uh, after the root canal irrigation of an upper first molar uh, this poor child uh, felt a severe pain on her right cheek and after uh, one day uh, you see the pictures of ecchymosis and the big edema uh, what about uh, not to uh, face with such accidents? Uh, you can use negative apical pressure irrigation technique called endovac. In the first parts, the endovac system was very, very complicated. But nowadays, you can see the endovac uh, devices in, on in dental industry in a very uh, small uh, and a very uh, sustainable devices. You can use it. Its price is a little cost. So I advise you always not to use open-ended needles. You should use side-vented needles. Uh, and uh, you should always use uh, your irrigation systems like passive ultrasonic irrigation or uh, sonic irrigation techniques. It will be very uh, useful for you. Uh, you can use also endovac uh, not to produce such uh, effectiveness uh, like uh, extrusing sodium hypochlorite beyond the apex, but please don't forget that. Uh, endovac has no debris removal effect because it produces very small vulture stresses on the dentinal walls. So I always advise you to use passive ultrasonic irrigation technique uh, to remove more debris from the root canals. Also, please, please use uh, plastic irrigation needles to operate the root canal area. What about my protocol for the vital cases? As you see here, I always uh, advise using low concentration of sodium hypochlorite uh, for my vital cases. 2.5 uh, sodium hypochlorite will be enough for you. Uh, for the last uh, section of root canal irrigation after sodium hypochlorite, the distilled water, 17% uh, of ED8, just applying for one minute. After that, distilled water, later again, 2.5 sodium hypochlorite. And after that, uh, distilled water, and you can operate 
E, your root canals after drying the your root canal walls. Please don't forget to use activation, especially passive ultrasonic activation uh, before operating your root canals. What about your devital cases? The procedure is the same, but in the end of the row, your root canal irrigation protocol, I always advise you to use 2% uh, chlorhexidine, approximately five minutes uh, for disinfect your root canals more clearly. And after using 2% of uh, chlorhexidine, you should also use distilled water to neutralize your, your root canals and always dry your root canal walls and you can operate it clearly. Now let's discuss some cases I have uh, performed in my dental cleaning. For example, look at this case. There is a huge apical leg lesion at the apex of the root. I performed the root canal treatment for this patient and I advise this patient uh, to go to the restorative department for filling off his uh, tooth. He's an old guy and he came to my office six months later and told me that doctor, I didn't uh, go to anywhere to obtain my root uh, uh, for my tooth filling. And I asked uh, him why he didn't go and he told me that he had no pain and he don't need to go to any department. So I advised him to take any panoramic x-rays because uh, the time difference is huge for me. And after eight months, you can see the healing of the apical lesion. <laughs> because beside uh, the shaping of root canals, uh, the irrigation of the root canal is very important for me because the activation of root canals with passive ultrasonic irrigation is so important for me. What about this case? You can see a huge, uh, huge apical lesion at the end of this tooth. Also, by using a very good uh, irrigation systems like passive ultrasonic irrigation and by using a good instrumentation technique, you can observe the periapical healing one year later. What about in this case? You can see the apical lesion very clearly. In this case, you can see that after one year later, the tooth is healed very well after a very good activation of irrigant solution and by operating it very clearly. And also in this root canal treatment, I couldn't manage to go uh, to the apex. I just uh, cleaned the mesial root canals. Uh, in the distal root canal, I couldn't manage to go to the apex. Uh, I just retreated. I irrigated uh, it very, very clearly. And I also used activation systems. And at the end of one year, you can see the healing of this tooth. Even I couldn't go beyond towards the apex. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, this was a useful lecture uh, for you. Uh, if you have any questions about my uh, technique and about my lecture, uh, I can answer it in this uh, 10 minutes time. Uh, Lucy, can you hear me? Is there any question? You can send me via Is there any question? So, uh, as I mentioned uh, to you, uh, activating of your irrigant solution is really very important for you. Please uh, don't forget to use your passive ultrasonic irrigation devices as I uh, showed you in my slide. Uh, as you see, here, uh, you should always use uh, your passive ultrasonic uh, devices uh, in an intermittent way. Uh, you don't always have to use it in a prominent way because you should always use it in a 15 or 20 seconds and stop. 15 and 20 seconds and stop. You always have to refresh your sodium hypochlorite and at the end of one minute, it will be enough for you. Otherwise, while you are using such devices, you'll have uncontrolled dentin removal. Okay. And uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Woodpecker uh, to give me the chance to be with you. 
Uh, I am always using the products of Woodpecker and I am really very satisfied with the products of Woodpecker. I'm using uh, both uh, ultrasonic uh, devices and the endomotors of Woodpecker, especially the late A motor, um, the black one by Yoshi Terauchi. Uh, because uh, I find uh, Woodpecker's products very efficient. Uh, very feasible, very sustainable, uh, and then I really want to thank Woodpecker uh, to give me a chance to give such lectures. I'm really honored uh, to be a keynote speaker of Woodpecker. Uh, if you have any question, you can always ask me uh, in here. Wait, doctor, uh, there is yes. several questions. Okay. And also, let me say one thing. Uh, you can always ask your questions to me by my Instagram account, Endo Mustafa Gundogar. And also, you can send a mail to my uh, mail address. Yes, let's see. Uh, doctor, uh, there is a question on this plate on the screen. So please back to the stream yard. Answer uh, them first. Sorry, I, uh, Lucy, I couldn't hear you clearly. I am uh, stopping sharing my. Uh, there is a question on this plate on the screen. Can you see? Yes. Is yeah, there yeah. any other way of activation of irrigation system? If there is any other way of activation. Uh, dear doctor, uh, as I told you, uh, we are using the latest technology for uh, irrigation activation systems. So I always advise you to use uh, ultrasonic irrigation and the sonic irrigation systems um, because our aim is to get the power of uh, multisonic activation like gentle bit. And you can obtain this power by using ultrasonic activation and sonic activation. And you should know how to use them efficiently in the root canal. Yes, Lucy, is there any more question? Should we use sonic and ultrasonic simultaneously? Which is better to use? Uh, when you check the literature, uh, some of the uh, authors report that ultrasonic irrigation is better than sonic, sonic irrigation. Uh, some of them say uh, the sonic is better than. But in my opinion, uh, they have the same effect for the on, removal of debris from the root canals. My advice is uh, that uh, you should know how to use these systems in root canals. So you should do more practice. It will be very useful for you. And uh, using passive ultrasonic irrigation uh, in an intermittent way will be very uh, useful for you. One more question, Lucy. Okay. I want to say goodbye all of you. I am sending my best regards from Istanbul, Turkey to everyone. Again, I am uh, telling you that if we have any more questions, you can reach me by Instagram or Facebook. And uh, thank you very much, Woodpecker family, for giving me a chance uh, to be with you. And in my opinion, I will be with you in uh, next days with other very important lectures. Uh, goodbye to everyone from my lovely country. And this is Atatürk, uh, the protector of our country. Uh, he He's the uh, founder of Turkish Republic of Turkey. And I want to say goodbye to you with Atatürk. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.